Hello. So today we are going to discuss basically multiplication in algebra. So we're going to discuss the multiplication laws in algebra. We're going to discuss multiplication of fractions, all sorts of stuff. But before we continue, we should probably get a better understanding of what multiplication is itself. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find multiplication of a times b. That's the chalk sign here. So where a and b are just any number. Basically, in science, what I'll do is I'll call the properties of something a letter. So, for example, I can call mass, um, you know, I'm just going to call it a letter. So, in this case, this is just the product of two numbers. But then, yet again, what is the product in the first place? So, then you're probably going to ask me, well, it's just a plus a, all of it to be times. Well, if you think that, and you don't think of any picture, then you probably haven't developed much of an intuition of what this is in the first place. So. Anyway, one proper way to think of it is the area of a rectangle, or in other words, the size, with side lengths A and B. So that's all multiplication is. So before we continue to actually draw writing examples of multiplication, what we can do is try to determine some of the properties. So we have area, big A, is equal to little a times little b. So one thing that you will notice is that no matter how you view this rectangle, if you view it as if you're a camera right here, or uh, so let's say that's your observer, and I'm not really good at dry, drawing any people, so that's an observer, or that's a person. If you see it from here, then what you're going to see is this. Side length B and side length A. But if you observe it like this, then you're going to see it as it is in the figure. So then what this says is that since the area is the same, no matter where you view it from, you're going to have a times b is equal to b times a. And I think this is called a commutative law. Basically, one way to think of it is you're sort of commuting where your camera is. I don't know. So then there's the question of, well, what are actually, how do you actually get the purpose, the properties of multiplication that we're all familiar with from this? So the size, what you can do, is you can represent it basically by taking a slices in this direction. Well, I should probably do something like this. And excuse my lines, they're probably not perfect, but you get the point. So here I have a lines. And here I have b lines. And when I take each of these points, that's what ends up being the area. So in this case, it looks like B is what? 5, and A is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you go in, here's 5 dots, here's another 5 dots, that makes 10 dots, 15 dots, and you can go on until 45. So this is basically where we actually came up with multiplication. So then now we're going to move on to the concept of fraction. But first, one might want to know what division is. So, now instead, in the case of division, instead, we know the area or the size. And I know this side length, but I don't know what this side length is. So we call this a divided by b. So there's multiple ways to call it. You can call it that. You can call it that. You can call it all sorts of things. Um, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of ways to call this. So what you can do now is actually try to figure out what dividing is. So anyway, you already have a times b is big A if a is this slight length. And then you also have that A divided by B is equal to A. So then we run into this property in which I can substitute in for A. 
That's one of the things we do all the time in algebra. And we end up with A over B times B equal to A. So this is very strange. It appears that these concepts of multiplying and dividing that we've had in the back of our head since third or fourth grade appear to be sort of the same thing. It appears that if you first divide any number by some other number and then multiply it by that same number, you'll get the same thing. So you'll get dividing and multiplying are opposites. But then there's a question of does it go the other way? If I first multiply and then divide, will it give me the same answer? Well, the answer to that question is going to be yes. Now, instead what we can do is we can call this area A times B. But then what we can do is now we have to substitute for this quantity. Last time we substituted for A, so now we're going to substitute in for the area. So we have A, A times B, which is the area. We're now going to substitute in for this guy. And then divided by B, that's just this guy, is equal to A. So in other words, if I first multiply and then divide, you're going to get the same thing. Or if I first divide and multiply, I'm going to get the same thing. So if you first multiply and then divide, you're just going to get opposites. So let me get my tracer and start tracing stuff. Then there's the question of what do we do once we're here? So now comes, well, we could do multiple things. We could try to deal with fractions. So what I'd like to do is, instead of having this be B, let's instead call it something else. Let's and say instead that's something else. Let's say C. And so the outcome will be something else, D. And so the question is, now suppose that I know what this guy is, I know what this guy is, and I know what this guy is. What on earth is that guy? Well, again, just by thinking of the rectangle, multiplying and dividing are opposites. So from there, what I can do is if I multiply both sides, or, you know, I can put the B here based on the commutative law. If I multiply both sides by whatever's in this denominator, then they're opposites. So this B goes away. By this law, the B will go away. So then you have A times C equals C times B. Now this is an extremely important step to wrap your head around. This is how you're going to start simplifying things later. And let's say instead, now I want to know what C is. So now I've got to get rid of the A. So let's put A in the bottom. Multiplying and dividing are opposites. So I get rid of the A. And this is what we're left with. C equals D times B over A. Okay? So this is relatively important. Now let's consider a practical example. How many of you have written on roller coasters? You guys have Okay. So it turns out that if the roller coaster is able to make up for its own friction, it will satisfy this law. Or low friction. Friction messes this up, but we're just going to ignore that right now. Anyway, what this means is M is the mass of whatever car you have. V is your speed. G is just some constant, which ends up being 9.8. H. And H is your height. So let's see, so like a thicker piece of chalk this thing is running out. So to draw a figure to try wrapping around this a little more, if this is the roller coaster, then my speed here, this is my speed B. And then I have some mass here, M. 
and my height is h. Where h is measured from where I started, so I should not have to go there. Now, then there's the question of, I want to know the speed. I want to know how fast this thing gets. And I know how heavy I weigh on the cart. I can measure that. I can just put the cart on this tail. I can, you know, measure the weight of the cart. I know what this thing is. And I know how high I am. Then there's the question of how do I get the speed. So we're going to use the same process. So again, multiplying and dividing are opposites. So first of all, one thing we can do is what on earth does this two thing mean? What does the two mean? Well, the two, it just means I multiply twice. So then you would suspect that there's got to be some opposite to this as we multiplying and dividing. So it ends up that we call that two thingy a square. We call that squared. And the reasoning behind that is, oh, here, let me erase this, that if I make a square, of side length B, that's much the letter i using, then its area is B squared. Now, of course, what I could do is if I start with B squared, and let's say I just call that big B, uh, that looks too much like little B, um, let's go letter W, then I want to know what this thing is. So then what we can do is we just say this thing is the square root of W. And that's the symbol we use. So this weird little box open thingy Thank you. 